Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today, this is powerful. We are going to talk about one of my very, very favorite topics, real estate. But this, I actually was able to snag you guys, a celebrity rock star in the real estate space. This woman is, and her company that she works with is changing the absolute game for landlords. And, and, and no, no, no pun intended. I am a subscriber to this platform. I use this platform in my own real estate endeavors, and you are going to find out why she's here to help us landlords take 2024 and into the future. Huge, huge chain this is a game changer if you're a real estate investor thinking about real estate investor you have to watch this lady and what she's doing this episode is a place to be here we go Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Gen- Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today I have a very special guest, Miss Christy Ruther. This woman has studied the real estate industry exclusively for the past four years, and she's a chock full of wisdom, knowledge, information, and she's here to help us, we, me, us, we. And this audience streamline our investment property management and change the absolute game. She helps analyze, she's analyzed tens of thousands of surveys and responses from landlords and tenants to craft the most comprehensive dynamic plan and webinar series to help share and give back to us landlords that has helped. I got to say it has helped me and, and <laughs> change the absolute game. I have really love this platform. It's called Turbo Tenant. If you have not heard of it, I don't know where you've been. You've been living under a rock. You want to be tuned into this show right now. We're on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Ghana, radio.com, Facebook, Facebook business page, YouTube, and every platform, anywhere you get your podcasts, we are there. And you want to tune into this very special guest. So I can't hold this phenomenal rock star lady back anymore. Help me welcome to the stage, the incredible, the amazing Miss Krista Ruther. Wow. Thank you so much. What a kind intro, Marcus. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I am so happy to be. This is an honest intro, (laughs) ma'am. You and your company and your team are doing the work and you've changed my life for the better. I couldn't really and truly. What you all don't know is backstage, I had a little stardom moment, right? And I was really starstruck. And I was telling uh, Miss Ruther and how has Turbo Tenant changed my real estate investing game? And it has taken me to an absolutely next level. It's phenomenal. I love this app. I, I, this software, this company is huge. And, and, and we were joking and I was being honest that I, when I bought my, my rental property, my duplex, um, me and my, you know, when you, one of the things you'll learn when you have a property manager, she may or may, they may or may not charge you a fee, um, for placing a tenant in the property. Some of them do, some of them don't. <laughs> so I had a bet with my property manager that whoever places the tenant first, she, if if I win, she doesn't charge me that fee. If she wins, I pay the fee. The tenant moves in, and we go about life. And I'm short, um, first first month's rent. For the past six years, I have won that bet because of the incredible application Miss Ruther represents today. And she's here on the Gentleman Style Podcast show to give back and share her wisdom, her experience as the, the lead on this platform and huge, huge nuggets today. So thank you, Ms. Ruther, again, for being here. I want to give, I want to start off with a curveball here. Sure. Why, how did you get started? How, how, how do most people get started in landlording? Because I know I gave my, my kind of start, but what is the most common path that you see landlords take that, that in, in getting into the landlord game? 
you know, there are a few common pathways, some that might surprise you. First and foremost, you have somebody who has family who have done real estate investing. So maybe they had a leg up when they first got started. They've seen the business firsthand. They said, yeah, I'm going to jump into that. Those are typically folks who might uh, kick off their real estate investing when they're a bit younger, maybe in their early to late 20s, um, getting started, getting fired up. It's always possible to do earlier than that. We've seen it happen. But that's the story of our founder at TurboTenant. His name is Sarnan Steinbarth. He had family who were in the real estate investing game, and so he got into it too. Uh, saw a need for this kind of software to help out with every point of the real estate journey and really jumped in there. Uh, but then you also have people, and this one really surprised me, but you have people who just inherit a property, whether that's sadly from someone in their family passing away, or perhaps they need to move for work, but their interest rates are so good that they don't want to sell their original property when they have to go buy a secondary property. And really, the the fallback nature is to try and find someone to rent it out. Um, so some folks just never intended to become housing providers. And they said, well, this is what makes the most sense for the market that we're in. So let's jump in. However, there's not a lot of good education out there, or at least there wasn't. Very proud to represent the Turbo Tenant Education team so that folks who either never intended to get into the landlord space or folks who always had that plan but still want help along the way have trusted sources to fall back on, especially when it comes to the legal side of things. Facts. Huge. So I, I'm a bit selfish with this, y'all. I'm I'm really so one more round of applause <laughs> for Miss Ruther on that. The gentleman style podcast mascot is is all for this, right? Turbo Tenant is a absolute game changer, right? It really levels you up. It really takes your property management to the next level. And when and when I closed on my first um, duplex, I was freaking out because but. <laughs> Turbo Tenant made me look like a rock star. Um, and I'm going to let the expert the expert talk about the features that you can expect with this great platform. But when you hear some of the things, and, and, and the, the features, the really powerful features, a lot of it is free. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about a budget <laughs> and my first rental property and money is a little bit tight, I'm talking when this first property I had to, you know, I'm painting, I'm painting. I'm 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 doing a lot of the work because all the money isn't there yet, right? But I have to get this property ready to list. And Turbo Tenant, the software the application, had a lot of really strong things, the basic things that you need in property management, and most of it was free. Um, but Miss Ruther, can you share some of those those powerful features that people can expect um, with the platform? Please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you highlighted one of my favorite parts of Turbo Tenant, which is the fact that so many of our core features are free. So we offer support for every phase of the landlord journey from marketing your listing to finding tenants, screening tenants, making sure you're feeling comfortable with who's moving in, maintenance management, uh, rent collection, you name it, we can help you do it. And by and large, this is a free service for landlords. Now we do offer a premium subscription if you wanna really dive into an integrated rental software accounting program, or you need income insights, which is another way to validate someone's self-reported income. But if you're whether you're just starting out and you have absolutely no budget, you're really pinching pennies, or you just wanna make sure that you're keeping more of your ROI, you can come in, sign up for free, utilize our services, um, especially when it comes to the applications, marketing, and screening tenants. That's usually where a lot of folks come in and they're saying, hey, where do I do this? How do I do this? And we have everything you need to just plug in and get started right away. We also recently developed, and this is a really cool tool, uh, we developed an AI-generated listing description. So if you are feeling really non-creative, you're like, I just need to get this listing up into the world. You can enter the address, click a button. And this AI model is actually trained on the fair housing course that I helped to write a couple of years ago with my boss, Jonathan. And so it has those principles in mind as it's helping to spit out some nice generated content that describes your property in a way that abides by fair housing. Of course, I'm always going to tell people to double check, read through it, make sure it feels good before you put it live. But that has certainly helped our landlords. And we've even seen that pay off. Our landlords, on average, get 28 leads per listing. 
mostly because you just do it all once. You click a button, we will send it out and put it on all the top rental sites on your behalf. And then all of those leads come in, they're labeled, you can follow up. We try and make it as easy as possible to be a great landlord. All the tea. All the tea. When I when I when I tell you guys, game changer, right? She's not kidding, y'all. And and for me, I, I I learned something about myself when I first got into real estate that I am not a creative, right? I am a copy and paste connoisseur, right? I can take something and I can integrate it and I can polish it up and make it mine. But I can't create something from scratch, right? I usually look at something, and so that integration is a huge, huge benefit because to make a listing sound magical and special, I'm going to say the best thing, I'm going to say some fictitious stuff. <laughs> like you're going to not believe it. like, Oh, the best house on the block. Come stay here. Rent me. Like no one's going to believe that, but it's really authentic. I'm serious. The, the technology, the platform, just like Miss Ruther said, the platform because I didn't know how to do background checks. I'm calling the police department thinking that, hey, um, sheriff, how do I conduct a background check? Uh, Turbo Tenant does that for you. So again, when you, it's a click of a button, you launch it on all the top brand sites. And even, even to that extent, those top brand sites filter it down to the smaller guys. So you're really taking a huge chunk of the market with one click. And it, it, it does all of the heavy lifting for you. Tenants can apply. I'm, I'm so excited. I love it. I'm going off. I'm going off. The, this platform really made me look like a professional and in something that was really brand new. Can you talk about some of the common things that landlord miss when they're listing their property for rent? Um, can you can you share some tips on that? What are the common things that we miss mistake? Because, you know, it's easy to get excited and you're going to Zillow and you're going to list it and you may miss something when you're going to Trulia and Trulia. You forget to list that you listed something on here that you didn't put on true. So can you explain how how the software works with that, how Turbo Tenant works with that? Yeah, absolutely. So all of your listings through us, let's say you've got one, you're really excited, it's your duplex, right? We're getting it out into the world, we're finding you that fantastic tenant. The nice thing about using something like Turbo Tenant is that you only have to make updates on one listing and then they populate across all of the other sites on your behalf. Um, so no more do you have to worry about, oh my gosh, I said this on Trulia, but I missed it on Zillow. We will make sure that your listing stays updated and taken care of if there are any tweaks that you need to make. Now, in terms of content or ideas that I most often see folks miss when they are listing their properties. Uh, one good shortcut is just to make sure that you are including a brief snapshot of some of your most common policy questions or rules. So for example, if you don't allow pets, it's really easy to forget this, but if you just add a little note at the bottom that says no pets allowed, or let's say you do allow pets, but there's a fee, make a little tiny note, uh, cats allowed, one cat, $50 per month pet rent. That way people can self-qualify and that means that you're saving your time, but you're also saving their time so that the leads that you're getting are warmer and more excited, a better fit for your rental versus folks who might just be poking around, unsure, or they didn't have that information, it would have been a deal breaker and thus you both are kind of wasting a little bit of time. Um, in that same vein, I would say make sure if you are Think like, let's say you have a rental that's near a university or otherwise you want to make sure that people know you have really great public access to transportation or whatever you'd like. Add a note in there in your listing. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Bullet points are your best friend. People want to be able to scan through quickly. But any kind of uh, feature like that that you might ignore or otherwise not think of because maybe you don't use that public transit, that's going to be a real win for many renters. So you might as well throw it in and then give them a better sense of how they can get around your city or town right out the front door or maybe a couple blocks away. So anything you can do to talk about the surrounding area in a really quick little note, I think will add further color to your listing and further incentivize people to come on in, get excited about it. I told y'all, I told y'all, <laughs> incredible. Game-changing app, Ms. Ruthers and her team are heading it up. She is, she's done the legwork. She's done the heavy lifting. Turbo Tenant has done the heavy lifting for you. 
Um, can I list, you said all the major platforms, right? The big dogs. Yeah. Can I list on Craigslist and other platforms like that? You know, I need to double check. I believe we do have an integration with Craigslist. We had it for a little bit. We saw that it wasn't formatting correctly. So we disconnected while we were working on it. I believe we're back where you can post it on there again. So I'd have to double check our support center, but I think the answer is yes. You guys, you guys, need we say more? We're going to say more. We're going to say more. But we have one quick commercial break. We got to pay some bills, y'all, and, and, and our show sponsors. So we will be right, right back. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. We are back on the Gentleman Style Podcast show, and we have the incredible, amazing, super fragilistic XB Alado, Miss Christy, Krista Ruther. And she is changing the game and she's helping us landlords look like absolute pros with this. How, how long, correct me if I'm wrong. I know you've been around as long, uh, at least like 2014, but how long has Turbo Tenant been around? Um, probably longer than that. You know, no, you're pretty much on the money. Um, we were founded in 2015 and really have built up from there. I'm so proud of how far the company has come and what we're continuing to do for landlords. And I'm, I'm so proud of you. And please stay. Please don't go. It, it, when I tell you this incredible, I, I, it was, I think I had listed it, listed the property. I hit that magic button. It went out there. <laughs> like I said, I've been beating my property manager's tail for the past <laughs> six years. And one of the things it, you, you actually get feedback. So the tenants actually can apply and it comes through the Turbo Tenant software. So can you speak to that integration and how tenants, how you're communicating with tenants and how that back and forth is, is transitioning? Help us, please help us. <laughs> I am here for you. So tenant communication and really focusing on that landlord tenant relationship is critical to everything that we do here at Turbo Tenant. And we know that that starts with a good listing, but that continues with good touch points throughout the actual review process and as you try and screen a tenant XYZ. So with that in mind, we boiled in some touch points that other software doesn't, which I'm really excited about. For example, we have a pre-screening questionnaire that um, interested tenants can go through so that let's say they've taken a look at your property, they want to take that next step, but then they just go through this quick questionnaire, they can self report their income if they have pets, XYZ. That way you can take a look and see if they generally align with your criteria before you actually pull their rental application. Uh, now, Besides the fact that, again, that saves you time, that saves them time, it also saves them money because tenants are the ones who, by and large, pay for their application and screening through TurboTenant. It is uh, the landlord's choice. If you want to go in there and pay it instead, you certainly can. But we generally charge the tenant and then a full screening report is pulled. That will include their criminal history, their eviction history, and their credit history, as long as we can include all of those aspects based on where you live. So with that in mind, we also want to make sure that the um, denial process, let's say you have 
a, a wealth of different applicants and a couple of them don't fit, but you've already pulled the report. By law, you need to send an adverse action letter, but we said, hey, don't worry about that. We will send that for you. So now anytime that you pull a tenant's information, their screening report, and you decide not to go forward with them, you mark them as declined. We send that out on your behalf so that you are staying legally compliant. They understand their right to go and investigate their screening report if there are any errors, and everyone is happy, healthy, and wealthy. I'm salivating. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, man, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. Like when I tell you, and again, it's very detailed, right? And mm -hmm. it, it gives you a recommendation. You can take those tenants side by side and you can compare them and say, okay, I, and you can score them. You can be like, okay, this person is closer to my criteria, but they got, they got tarantulas. And then <laughs> this person over here it was, is a better candidate and they meet my criteria. And I, that was so creative when I saw that. When you give me the option as the landlord to say, hey, the tenant can pay for this background check or I can pay because maybe it may be someone I know. It may be someone I want to help out because they're struggling to find a place, but I still want to do my due diligence and see yeah. what you got going on. But I'll save you some money in the front door by giving, you know, I'll take that. I'll take that fee um, off of your plate, but I still want to know what you got going on behind the scenes. So that was that was really intelligent that you guys did that. That was super super intelligent because it puts the landlord in the driver's seat, but he's not alone in the driver's seat. If that makes sense, is that you, yes, you that, that makes was, complete sense. Oh, and it's funny you say that. I think a lot of it was inspired by the fact that we are made for landlords by landlords. So many of the folks, our CEO, for example, the founder of the company, a lot of our product folks are landlords and they are in there every day managing their own rentals. And that helps inform how they approach the work that they do at TurboTenant, which means there's a lot more understanding and empathy for the pain points that folks suffer through as they're trying to build up their portfolios. And we can attack them one by one and say, no, you're not alone in this. We've got you. Do you need a better way to screen tenants and understand who's moving in? We've got you. Do you want information on ESAs and how to validate them? We've got you. So it's a big part of what we do is trying to make sure that housing providers understand they're not alone in this business. It's a very people forward business and we can make it simple to be really good at this business. She got me. She got me. <laughs> you you touched on ESAs and, and I want to stay here for a minute because this is, this is good. I think landlords, we, we get this wrong all the time, right? Because we, we have applicants that come in and say, Oh, it's, it's my service animal. And we mess it up all the time when we decline, when really we don't know the difference. And so Miss Ruther, I snagged her, I stole her for a minute. I got her here to help us. Can you help break down the difference between an ESA and, and what a real service animal is and help us get to a better place of understanding mindset wise so we know the difference? Such an important question, Jazz, that you asked. An ESA is an emotional support animal. So these are usually going to be typical household animals, right? Cats, dogs. Um, there are some cases where something like a tarantula or well, a more exotic, a, a parrot, let's say, has been registered. There was a story once, I, you're going to laugh, but I think it's out of Florida, and they registered a crocodile, an emotional support crocodile, which, you know, <laughs> it's a choice. It's, I don't, it's not a choice I would personally make, but it's a choice. Um, and ESAs are valid if they have the proper documentation. ESAs are actually protected under the Fair Housing Act because they support people with disabilities, but they support mental disabilities, emotional disabilities, versus a service animal is only going to be a dog or a miniature horse. Now, I've got that. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> a pony. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I've gone back and forth. And I once was having a conversation with Chris, who's a compliance expert that I know. And I was like, Chris, why a miniature pony? Like, why a little horse? What is this? And he said, you know, it's been really contested in his industry, but he, he thinks it's because of the support they can give to folks out in more rural parts of the country. And I said, you know, great for them. <laughs> great for them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but the main differentiator here is that service animals have to be specifically trained. So you might think of, let's say, a dog who has been trained to tell when a diabetic's blood sugar is low and gives them a sign so they can test their blood sugar and do something about it. Or I guess a miniature pony who's been trained to um, see when a seizure is going to happen and make sure that they help their owner get to a safe position. 
ESAs do not have any of that training. Um, they are not required to be trained. However, when it comes to validating them, it's pretty straightforward. You can ask your tenant to produce an ESA housing letter. That letter should have information from their provider. It's usually a therapist, but it could be a social worker. It could be um, a group therapist. And it should detail who the person is, how long they've been a patient, why this emotional support animal is needed, and offer up some kind of um, connection point or a place for you to ask more questions as you have to. Now, I will say, by and large, you don't want to tangle up and ask them too many questions. One, they are bound by HIPAA. You as a landlord are not, but you mm. might not get a lot of answers. However, you can ask for things like the nexus point between the provider and the tenant. Let's say I've lived in Colorado my whole life, but my uh, therapist operates out of Canada. Uh, that might give you pause and you might want to say, mm. well, Krista, how did you guys get connected? And you could look at receipts from different sessions to establish our professional relationship between me and my therapist, or you could ask for more information. But that's one key point. Look for that nexus. And secondly, there should be some kind of license number in the ESA housing letter. You would then go to the um, government site for wherever that person operates. I don't, I use Canada before. That's a bad example here because I don't know what kind of You're Canadian good. license boards. Let's switch to California. Um, so you could go on and search for California therapist license board and put in their number and see if they come up because they should, right? If they're a legitimate therapist, they should have a legitimate license number. And you can use these factors to determine how you need to move forward. If it is an, a legitimate ESA, you're going to have to let it come in, assuming that your rental has the space for it. It's not putting the animal at risk. It's not putting other people at risk. For example, if it's, um, you know, a bigger breed dog who has a history of pet attacks, that would be grounds to deny that ESA. However, if it's just a big dog um, and all of the paperwork looks good, it's valid, you've connected the therapist and the tenant, then you most likely need to let that dog move in and you're not allowed to charge any fees, pet rent, pet deposit, et cetera, when it comes to ESAs. You see the brain, right? <laughs> you see the think on her, y'all? This is huge. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna quickly stay on regulations, right? Because okay. just like there's good landlords like myself, ah, just <laughs> like there's good landlords. Uh, like myself, there's also bad landlords. And so regulation, regulation, regulation. One in particular is the Fair Housing Act. Um, what is the importance and the significance behind the Fair Housing Act that landlords should be mindful of and paying attention to? I am very passionate about the Fair Housing Act. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things. Um, the major importance behind it, one, it's one of the only overarching pieces of legislation that covers the entire nation. Each of the cities and counties might have some of their own additional rules, even on a state level. Uh, for example, military background is a protected class in Colorado, but it's not everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. There are seven protected classes nationwide. And by being mindful of these protected classes, housing providers can ensure that they are allowing folks, folks to have equitable experiences and making sure that they are keeping their own biases in check. And not only is that a good practice to be a positive force in your community, but ignoring the Fair Housing Act can get you in a lot of hot water very quickly. Uh, your first Fair Housing Act violation can cost you up to $16,000. That's one six K. And the thing is, um, this act is so important because it protects people who are otherwise often left unprotected, right? So some of those protected classes include sex, race, national origin, family status. Uh, and you want to make sure that anybody could get into your rental. And there are very few cases in which people don't have to follow the Fair Housing Act. I am asked almost every time I talk about it. Um, <laughs> there are only a handful of situations in which you as a landlord would not have to abide by it. So it's better practice to just make sure that you are giving everyone the same experience. And that means making sure that your processes are documented, that you have it written down. This is how I approach tenant screening. I'm looking for this criteria. I'm doing it this way. I wait this many days before I contact them. And by having that background information ready at a glance, if there is a Fair Housing Act violation notice that comes your way, you can either explain it and say, 
you know, I understand where you're coming from. This is actually the situation. Or you can take that as a sign that you need to revisit your processes and ensure that everyone is having the same experience regardless of having these protected classes. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to share some, and, and, and here's the thing with when it comes to landlording, I think people, landlords need to evolve and they need to, to really wrap their minds around and see how they can really work with their tenants. I look at landlording as an opportunity, just like an employer, right? You're in, you're providing housing, you're providing shelter. So it's your responsibility to take care of these people in the best way possible. That making sure that the property is clean, nice, taken care of. And, and it, it's, it's almost like these, these are your, your, your family, right? That's how at least I look at landlording. And so I take a very um, personal responsibility when it comes to responsiveness and acting and making sure that everything is safe, making sure that the tenants are okay, making sure that I'm being fair and just. And I remember a situation where I had a tenant, um, she, um, for some strange reason, she kept breaking my, 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 my stove, <laughs> my, my range. And I'm like getting these notifications through Turbo Tenant because she's contacting me. Cause you can also be contacted, um, via um, Turbo Tenant, like Ms. Ruther explained, right? There's a dialogue here. So that rapport is established there. Um, like, like, And so she had contacted me, reached out to me and said, hey, your stove broke. And so she, I fixed it. I spend the money. The guy goes out, fixes it. And then she breaks it next month. And then the guy goes out, fixes it. And I asked the maintenance guy, I said, what is going on? What's <laughs> going on? Because this is, this, this is, a, a decent stove. It's not, it's not top of the line. It's not, you know, the Wi-Fi stove, right? It's going to connect to your phone and link up and turn on and all that stuff, but it's a decent stove. And the, and the, the maintenance um, technician I sent out, he said, uh, she's using it to run a soup kitchen. So she's cooking and running a business and she's cooking these large portions so that she can go and sell food items um, to the local community to make money. <laughs> and so, you know, I, from the perspective of landlording, I'm looking, you know, a lot of fellow landlords talk to me like, oh, you need to get her out. You know, she's a menace to society. She's horrible. She's this evil woman. Right. And I'm thinking about it. It's like, listen, OK, there's this young woman, single mom. She is earning a living. She works. And then on the side and on the weekends, on holidays, she cooks these large portions and earns an additional income. So mm -hmm. what did I do? I upgraded to a commercial stove. Uh, instead of this. right, and so thank you. I'll give myself that. I'll yeah. take that. <laughs> and so I upgraded the stove to a commercial stove and gave her so it's more durable, more sturdy, stronger, and it, it lasts longer and it can accommodate the large meals that she's cooking. So that was an opportunity because anybody could take that and say, Oh, well, the property is not zoned for commercial use, mm -hmm. yes and no, but. As a as a human being, am I really going to tell her, no, you can't make more money because she's using that money. Some of that I expect is coming my way as the landlord. And by the way, she's paying through the Turbo Tenant app. And so if I <laughs> want her to pay on time, why would I inhibit her and hinder her in that way by saying, oh, you cease and desist, stop cooking all of this? No. And that's why I wanted to kind of stay on this topic of regulations sometimes. And I. I would be, I would gladly, at the end of the day, we all got to stand up and answer for what we're doing. And I would be absolutely comfortable standing up in front of a judge and explaining what I did and why I did it. And so, and I think that's the heart behind it. And I think Turbo Tenant um, has that same, the leaders, you all, you and the leadership have that same heart in mind. That's why I, get, I pointed out in the beginning, you gave the option to me to charge them for a background check or to take on that, that you, you, there's heart behind that. It's not just an AI or anything like that. So that's powerful, Miss Ruther. So I want to share my story and my struggles at the same time. That's, that's necessary. I want to touch on the, <laughs> the process of marijuana and the introduction of marijuana into the landlording platform. What kind of horror stories or what kind of things you've seen experience or heard from landlords like myself mm -hmm. and how 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 that works integrates with the turbo tenant system if at all 
A fantastic question. So recently, if you've been keeping an eye on the news, I mean, one, there's been plenty of news to keep an eye on, but um, President Biden indicated that he would be looking to reclassify marijuana. He had an official recommendation from the DEA. So that is something that is in motion. While marijuana is not currently federally legal, uh, that could be changing soon, um, sooner than folks were anticipating. And of course, there are plenty of states, I believe it's 33 when I last researched this, 33 states that allow marijuana in some form, which means Ooh. you just need to be mindful about what level of legality exists where your property exists and how you want to go about it, right? So if you live somewhere or operate your rental property somewhere where no form of marijuana is legal, that's pretty in the clear, right? Um, you know, still want to keep your eye out, still want to make sure that you are doing your inspections regularly to, it, to see if somebody is smoking, but also just to check in on your property, answer questions, facilitate that healthy relationship with your tenants. Now, if you are somewhere where some form of marijuana is legal, uh, take an extra look at your lease. I have some sample lease language that I'm happy to send over. It's a brief snippet that you can add into your custom lease agreement. It's very simple, but you can determine your level of comfort with marijuana in your properties. If you want it so that people can smoke marijuana outside and you have a designated area for that, I'm always going to tell you to check your local laws um, <laughs> sometimes. Like, for example, Colorado multifamily properties are specifically worded in such a way that you have to be respectful of people who do not smoke at all in the multifamily. So it's hard to designate an outside area for marijuana smoke. So again, double, double check your laws. Um, but if you want to make updates like that and say, hey, this is where this behavior is allowed. Or if you just want to say across the board, no marijuana in this property, you can very easily add it in with this sample lease language. I will also say, not a lawyer. So take these kinds of things and make sure that you feel comfortable with them, run them by your local lawyer before you implement in them into your lease. But it's pretty straightforward. And what I recommend both with marijuana and with any other major topics that pop up the more robust your lease can be, the better it will serve you in the long run. So including a quick clause in there about your expectations with marijuana usage, even if you're renting to someone who you never imagined would ever engage with marijuana, let's say you have an 80-year-old grandma who's just living life, having a grand old time, <laughs> you still might want to have that in your lease just to cross your T's and dot your I's. It's better to put it in there or to add it in as an addendum, which you can do through TurboTenant for a small fee, or if you're a premium member, you get unlimited lease addendums to always be changing it as you need to. Um, but making sure that you have some kind of language in there that speaks to your expectations will help you maintain control over your property and understand what people are doing and make sure that you're mitigating any of the risks of marijuana as well. And be on the lookout for super happy grandmas. <laughs> Extremely happy grandmas. Be on the lookout. Be on, be, beware. Beware. Mm -hmm. and, I want to stick here because we're talking about providing addendums and changing leases and lease agreements. So the, walk me through that. The lease agreement, um, I've reviewed everything mm -hmm. and the, the tenant can upload and submit those documents to me for review as well. In addition to the background check that I that they've paid for, or I've paid for, correct? Correct. So you can either use your own lease agreement. Let's say that you've built one out with your lawyer. You're super excited about it. You can upload it to Turbo Tenant and have it sent out there. Or if you have a paper lease, God bless you, you can go ahead, you can get that all signed up, and then you can upload the copy of it to your Turbo Tenant account just for record keeping purposes. And lastly, if you don't have a lease, we provide state-specific leases across all 50 states and U.S. territories. So you can go ahead, get in there. We keep them up to date. So as different pieces of legislation come through and different requirements are made, our legal team goes through and makes those updates so that you always have the most up-to-date information that you need. Uh, and then you can send it out digitally through our platform, have your tenants sign it, you sign it. It's all living right there. I really like that lease storage option because it's really helpful to be able to either point people back to the lease and say, hey, I think there's some confusion about lawn care. Like, as we said in the lease, this is the expectation. Um, and being able to just do that in a click versus, well, let me go find my file folder and I will be flipping through <laughs> for a hot minute. It's a game changer. It really is. I was not kidding, y'all. 
<laughs> Turbo Tenant has made me look like an absolute pro. I, I'll never forget the first time I got into real estate and I was collecting the rent from the tenant. The 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 lady and her boyfriend were 50, 60 years old. And I am not 50, 60 years old. And I'm knocking on the door here to collect rent. And I'll never forget it to the day I die. And she was like, oh, you're the owner? <laughs> and it was, and really, it's literally, they're looking at this young, unsuspecting man. And they realize they could not believe that they were paying this much money to someone younger than them. Mm -hmm. And so Turbo Tenant has made me an absolute beast. <laughs> and it made me an absolute guru because now I look professional. I, if I don't have it, I can still send a, a, a state approved lease to the tenant, collect rent all on, and I never have to knock on another door again. And I want to also touch on pay stubs. How can I spot this? Is, this is, I had a, this hasn't happened to me, mm -hmm. but I had a buddy have this issue and he said, they uploaded a fake pay stub and then the tenant signed the lease. They got in there and the next month they couldn't pay. What are some some telltale signs that people can look out for? Landlords can look out for to spot a fake pay stub. Are there any tells? So many tells. Unfortunately, it is getting easier and easier to fake pay stubs. So I really hope that if you take nothing away from this presentation, <laughs> from, this, from this convo, uh, these are the most important bits. Um, first of all, just as a, a general gut check, look over the document. Are things properly aligned? You'd be surprised how many times a fake pay stub rolls through and something is just a little cattywampus, right? Something is not lining up. Maybe the actual numbers are just slightly off. That wouldn't happen with a, a professionally produced pay stub, right? Mm -hmm. um, simply put, there's a lot of care that goes into that on the back end of a company. And so if it's from a legit company, it should look very orderly. You also want to see if the numbers are perfectly rounded. They often are not. Can you remember the last time that you were paid exactly an even figure? <laughs> like, <laughs> what <doesn't> happen? <laughs> Ten million dollars. <laughs> exactly. Casual, casual. Um, <laughs> but if you're seeing something like that, you're like, huh, so they get paid $1,000 every two weeks. That's exactly. No change. <laughs> no change. That's a big red flag because... It just doesn't pan out like that realistically, right? In most mm. situations. Um, also, oftentimes scammers will transpose a capital O and a zero. So if you start seeing O's and zeros of different widths, that should give you pause as well. Um, especially when it comes to the actual figures. If you see that all of a sudden there is a zero that just looks a little plump, that should make you pause and say, <laughs> what's going on there? I make yeah. 1,000 O's. <laughs> 1,000 O's, and no one can take that from you, you know? But we're going to say maybe not this rental. Uh, also, if they have confused, like, information that is not the same or that feels confusing between the two sections, for example, if their address is listed one way on the first page of the pay stub and then maybe in a bottom corner on the next page, it's listed in a slightly different way, that's weird. That wouldn't happen if it was from an actual company. Um, and two, I would say when you see the name of that company, do a little bit of work, go online, try and look them up. Is there an actual website that you can pull up pretty easily? Do they look legitimate or is it at best kind of a, a fake page that doesn't have any contact information, no reviews, doesn't seem like a business that's trying to sell its wares? That should, as I mentioned, give you pause. So there are a lot of points where I just want folks to be really to really give themselves a little bit of time to sit down with this document, look over for some of these telltale signs. But again, if something just doesn't feel right, you can ask for further documentation to validate someone's income. That is well within your right. You just go to them and say, hey, Krista, I appreciate you sharing this pay stub with me. I still need to verify a couple of details. Could you get me a bank statement by next Friday at noon? And if they say mm -hmm. yes, great. You feel good. You've, you're validating what they've given you. If they say no, or they stop contacting you at that point, you just got rid of a scammer, most likely. So congratulations. <laughs> Caught them. Caught Caught em. Em. Send them out the door. You don't need that. It'll get messy. And unfortunately, oftentimes that sort of behavior can lead to evictions, which is just really painful and costly on both sides. 
But you know what? Turbo Tenant helps you catch them on the front end before they even got in the door. And that's powerful. That's huge. And, and, and <laughs> game changing software, game changing software. So I've got tenants. I can look like a boss. I can list my property. I, I, and I know I've been tooting this horn since the beginning of this episode, but I, I'm doing everything right, Miss Ruther. What are why do people still hate landlords? I want to debunk this. I want to get it out there. Why do people still hate landlords? I'm doing things right. I'm a um, I'm following the Fair Housing Act. Um, I'm allowing pets with a deposit yeah. and I'm doing everything right. Why do people still have this negative stigma around landlords? You know, it's a really good question. I think it comes down to a few key factors. One, bad news travels faster and gets more clicks than good news. So seeing someone really abuse their power or take advantage of people as a landlord is going to run a lot farther in the news cycle than someone who's being a really fantastic landlord and giving their tenants a commercial stove to make sure that they can keep making their excellent soup for the community. <laughs> um, unfortunately, while that is so sweet and so kind and really at the heart of what I think it means to be a good housing provider, the news cycles will be like, hmm, no blood in there. So I guess <laughs> we'll leave it <laughs> Oh so there is that there is that aspect um but it's also i think just the general pull between someone having a need and requiring a service and someone being able to provide that service with all of the world all of pop culture saying you guys should hate each other because when it comes down to it i as you mentioned at the jump in your very kind intro i've had the pleasure of conducting a ton of survey projects to understand what's going on in the rental industry at any given point in time. And by and large, I see that renters and landlords rate each other at a 4.4 out of five almost every single time. So all of that stigma, all of that, you know, toxic stuff going back and forth is amplified by pop culture and by the news more than it's actually lived and experienced. Now, there are still going to be folks who, whether it's just online <laughs> or it's in person, they're going to say things about landlords. They're going to really go after it and, and call them horrible names. But at the end of the day, a lot of people in this country cannot afford to buy a home. And so if you are giving them a place to live and they are paying you for that place to live and you are not price gouging them, you're responsive to their requests, you maintain a good and professional relationship, there is nothing wrong with being a housing provider. You can be a really good force for the community and in fact, kind of be the tide that lifts everyone up as long as you're mindful about it and you're not falling victim to thinking of tenants just as numbers. In fact, what I often urge people to do is think of their tenants like business partners. You're both in this together. And if you serve them well, they will serve you well. And of course, there are bad apples on each side, right? I'm sure you might have some horror stories about tenants. I've certainly heard so many horror stories. Um, but people, by and large, want to do good and they want to do right by each other. We just have to encourage that by setting proper expectations, making sure we're maintaining good communication, taking care of issues as they pop up. And you might be surprised at how responsive, kind, and giving tenants can be in return. I, I want some tea from you, Miss Miss Ruther. I want to spill some tea here. Yeah. I, we have we have talked in in very in depth about um, Turbo Tenant. I wanted to ask because I haven't because again, when you communicate through the app and when there's maintenance issues, the tenants just kind of keep that line of communication. But can tenants actually submit maintenance issues through the app, app as the the software as well? They absolutely can. So they can go in, they can take pictures, take a video of what's going on, leave you some notes about the actual issue itself, and then pass it over to you. The nice thing is you can either take care of that yourself and move it along their status updates that you can give, which is really helpful in maintaining that line of communication. Or if you have a favorite contractor, you can go ahead and forward it as a work order to that contractor so that they have all of the information, including availability, to take that next step and actually resolve the issue. Huge. And what does the tenant see on their site? Is there an actual portal that they can go and submit those requests and make payments? Can can tenants make recurring automatic payments instead of having to log in every time? Can you help us see what the tenant sees on their end? Sure thing. So tenants do have their own portal. Um, it's quite similar to the landlord portal, but of course, with a couple tabs missing, uh, they don't have expense tracking like we do for the landlord side. 
but they can go into the maintenance tab. It's really easy. It's going to prompt them through everything they need to provide in order to give you a good understanding of what's going on. And then they send it right over. Similarly, your question about uh, rent payments. I love it. They can indeed go in there and set up auto pay so that their rent is just automatically deducting every month. They don't have to worry about it. And as a kind of aside, uh, we also partner with TransUnion and allow rent reporting. So for one low monthly subscription, your tenants can actually get their on-time rent payments reported to TransUnion, which can help build their credit history, where otherwise they're just paying rent. It's one of their biggest expenses, but they don't actually get anything except Ah, uh, you know, a place to live out of it. Way, <laughs> they can build up their credit history, maybe make a move to buying their own property someday or otherwise put themselves in a really good position to have their on-time rent payments count for more than just the substance of their housing. Huge. Ms. Ruther, tell us how can people get started? How can landlords get started with Turbo Tenant? Absolutely. You can sign up today at TurboTenant.com. Let them know that you're coming from this wonderful podcast. Um, we'd love to see it, but it's not a requirement. We'll still let you in even if you don't tell us a word about how you found us. You just go ahead over to the landlord sign up button, click in, you'll enter some quick information. And then depending on where you are in the rental journey, we'll help you either start listing your property, finding tenants, accepting rent payments, whatever you need, we've got you covered and it's really easy to get started. So dope, so dope. I told y'all, I told y'all. I, you see why I work? I work so hard for you guys. I slid in her DMs. I was like, I gotta have. Her. I hope she says yes. I hope she says it. Miss Ruther, you have been phenomenal this episode. You've given so many nuggets. The incredible, the beautiful. One more round of applause for Miss Ruther. <laughs> Incredible. Y'all, we got to let her go. We're running out of time. We got to be very respectful of this incredible woman. This huge, huge brains. Oh my God. Brains, beauty, the whole, the whole thing, the whole thing. Oh. So Ms. Ruther, I want to ask, what is one thing you would say to that young landlord? Cause I used to, I'm still young, but what would you say to that young landlord? Their back is against the wall. They're nervous. They're scared about to buy their first property or they've already closed on their first property and they're, they're nervous and don't know what to do. Any final nuggets or encouraging words to that young landlord getting started? Young landlord, you know, you've got a, a long road ahead of you. It's going to be such a good road. And we are here to support you through every step of the way. I think the most important thing that you can do is make sure that you're staying educated. There are so many free resources out there, a lot of them created by me and my team, that you can leverage to feel confident in your business and growing your business and achieving those dreams that you have. So tune in, make sure that you keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on in your local housing market. And heck, if you want to come and attend a monthly webinar with me, I deep dive into topics all the time. You can ask questions live. Happy to do it for you. But don't feel like you need to go down this road alone. There are plenty of people rooting for you to succeed. And how can we connect? How can we connect? Sure. So you can come to one of our webinars if you go to turbotenant.com slash education slash webinars. I will be there. You sign up, say, hey, uh, we're doing deep dives all the time. Last week, we did a deep dive on how to raise rent. Um, next month, who's, who's to say what will pop up? We would love to see you there, though. Get connected, connect, connect, connect. I can't say this again. Turbo Tenant is a game changer. If you're an inexperienced tenant, new tenant, even, even a, a, a VIP tenant, even if you've been doing this a minute, check it out. Check it out. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Ms. Ruther, thank you. I want to say this to you publicly. Thank you. Don't ever quit. Oh, we need you. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for doing what you do and putting people at the forefront, educating folks through this podcast. It's been just a lovely experience. Yes. <laughs> that's what, that's that did it. That did it. She got me. She got me. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message helps. I hope this serves you, helps you level up, and takes things to the next level. Myth Rooster has been phenomenal. Her team, Turbo Tenant. Thank you, Turbo Tenant. I'm a customer. Gonna stay a customer till the till the wheels fall off. I got a customer <laughs> for life. Thank you all for tuning in. Like I end every show, 
I, I'm shedding a tear. Like I end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and the incredible, amazing, beautiful Miss Krista Ruther of Turbo Tenant signing off. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>